Christ. The eyes of the world have descended upon Detroit Rock City as you are looking live at Ford Field, the Lions Den, home of the Detroit Lions here in the Motor City as we begin to kick off the biggest party of the summer. Welcome to Summer Slam!
Over 50,000 jam-packed inside of Ford Field as we bring to you the 2024 edition of SummerSlam! The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Women's World Championship! It is a stacked night of action here in the Motor City and what better way to kick things off than with the defense of the Women's World Championship courtesy of Friday Night Smackdown! The number one contender, the rising pupil, the prodigy, Roxanne Perez. She has stated over and over again, when she was drafted to Friday Night Smackdown, her intentions were not to make friends, her intentions were to win championship gold. And over the last few weeks, she has targeted a former friend in the champion in Raquel Rodriguez. Like her actions or not, Perez has played her cards correct. And now it is in the biggest match of her career. It is on Perez's shoulders to put up her shut up tonight. Can she leave SummerSlam Women's World Champion? Wearing championship gold around your waist can prove to be a double-edged sword and women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez has been reminded of that on the road to SummerSlam. Weeks ago, Roxanne Perez surprised us all as she stabbed Raquel in the back and made her intentions extremely clear. Perez, someone who has been climbing the ranks of success for months, has stated time and time again, she did not come to SmackDown to make friends. She came to be the champion. Raquel Rodriguez, a woman who has personified resilience in 2024, turning away the lives of Shayna Baszler, EO Sky, and Asuka to be the rightful holder of the hardware. Now she finds herself fighting an emotional battle against a young prodigy in Roxanne Perez who has shown there is no length she will travel to become the champion. So who will leave Detroit as the women's world champion? We find out the answer to that question as the prodigy Roxanne Perez challenges the women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez at SummerSlam. Roxanne Perez over the last few months has earned victories over the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, Nikki Cross, Tegan Knox, Zelina Vega, but can she keep down the ever-resilient Raquel Rodriguez? You can talk about the rise of Roxanne Perez, but you better not bat an eye at the year Raquel Rodriguez has had. Red Hot has been the term to describe the 2024 for the women's world champion. Winning the Elimination Chamber matchup back in January, riding that momentum into WrestleMania where she was within inches of taking down Shayna Baszler to win the championship. Many people would have crumbled under the pressure and the embarrassment of that loss and never to be seen again, but Raquel got herself up dusted herself off, walked right into Sacramento on May the 4th at Battleground, and turned away Shayna Baszler, and has been riding the high of Women's World Champion ever since. Defeating Io Sky and Asuka in championship defenses over the last few months, Roxanne Perez just may be the latest victim on Raquel Rodriguez's rise to superstardom here on Friday Night SmackDown. In terms of accolades, Roxanne Perez, a former NXT Women's and Tag Team Champions. Two accolades that Raquel Rodriguez can also make a note of. And of course, Raquel has gone on to massive success as her championship gold is hoisted in the air by official referee Jessica Carr. What a way to kick things off here. The biggest party of the summer. 
one of the most highly anticipated summer slams of all time the bell has sounded the women's world championship is on the line to kick things off over 50,000 on hand here in Ford Field for what is going to be an extraordinary night. An all-star lineup with superstars from Raw, SmackDown, legends like The Rock in the house tonight. Rock Sam Perez looking to start it out on a high note. And in her first attempt at winning the Women's World Championship, looks it to be the only attempt she needs as she outruns Raquel Rodriguez right there at a beautifully timed arm drag. Perez can be explosive, fast-paced at times inside of that ring. One thing, if you've been watching Roxanne Perez and all of her competition on SmackDown, Velocity WWE Live last weekend, Perez is many a times out-wrestling her opponents inside of the ring, one way or another, no matter if they're bigger, stronger, faster or not. Perez is clearly a student of the game. Will that be enough to keep down Raquel tonight? Tope Suicida to the outside. Well, that's certainly enough to knock down the champion momentarily. Perez has set the precedent in the early going to this matchup and a monkey flip right to the LED board. Raquel Rodriguez, not familiar with having her back up against the wall. But I don't think she was expecting this fury out of Perez in the early moments. All remains to be seen if Raquel will be able to bounce back as she sends the much smaller Perez into the ring. And that's a worthy note to make. Raquel Rodriguez with the size and strength advantage tonight. Got to see if it'll pay her dividends as Roxanne Perez looking to slow down Raquel before she can get going in a big boot. A couple more of those. And Roxanne Perez is going to be seeing stars for days to come. Raquel now has got Perez into the corner, sends her out, Lariat to the back. The champion starting to get her feet underneath of her. Raquel Rodriguez has got to be careful tonight that she does not fight an emotional battle. Roxanne Perez, somebody she looked at as a friend on Friday Night SmackDown, even teamed up on an occasion months ago in Raquel's pursuit of the Women's World Championship. Roxanne Perez obviously not interested in furthering that friendship only interested in becoming the champion. Raquel trying to get her ultimate payback for being stabbed in the back weeks ago on SmackDown. Big time double-handed choke slam that time. Perez just going for an amusement park ride down to the canvas. Raquel Rodriguez has been, as we talked about before, resilient throughout her Women's World Championship reign, whether it was dethroning the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, months ago. Defending it successfully against a game EO Sky back at King of the Ring or taking down Asuka last month in London, England. Certainly a array of challengers that Ra Raquel Rodriguez, excuse me, has faced. Roxanne Perez certainly fitting that term. Raquel Rodriguez is trying to match in that energy of Roxanne Perez who is setting the pace of this matchup. Raquel has slowed it down a bit. And now has got Perez on her shoulders and could be looking to bring this match up to a conclusion early. Ragdolling the challenger with a neck breaker. Damn near almost retained her women's world title. Massive neck breaker. Perez needing the ropes to get to her feet and a misstep by the champion. Talked about Roxanne being a student of the game, knowing her ring awareness and pulling down the top rope to send Raquel to the outside. Unfortunately, not enough in the tank, at least momentarily, to capitalize. Raquel Rodriguez getting up and dusting herself off off that misstep. Roxanne Perez has not seen much offense since that monkey flip on the outside a few minutes ago. Raquel Rodriguez, the aggressor in her championship defense here at SummerSlam. This is what Roxanne Perez cannot allowed tonight. That's just being ragdolled from pillar to post. She's been sent for a couple of rides courtesy of the champion, but now Perez starting to get fired up here, trying to use her speed and agility to her advantage. Perez into the corner, taking down Raquel off the uppercut. A sequence of strikes may lead to the championship, not just yet. Raquel not even allowing a one count there, but that might be a different story off the Impaler DDT. Raquel Rodriguez, Bell may be wrong. And Perez going for a kick, could have been looking for Pop Rocks that time. Raquel trying to do her damnedest 
to shake off the cobwebs, but you gotta believe she ain't feeling 100%. And another near fall. The champion is getting close to the finish line on a couple of occasions here. Roxanne Perez did not come all this way to fall short. Perez, as we mentioned, played her cards right. Played the emotional battle to jump the line and become number one contender to the women's world title. She got what she wanted. She's been playing mind games with Raquel ever since. Remember two weeks ago on SmackDown, Perez just making her way to ringside, distracting Raquel by grabbing a hold of the Women's World Championship. Meanwhile, Perez, picture perfect. Credit where credit's due, a massive frog splash halfway across the ring. Raquel may be in trouble. Oh man, pop rocks by Roxanne. No waste in motion, Raquel just got caught Perez knocks off the champion here is your winner and the new WWE Women's World Champion Roxanne Perez I don't discount anything Roxanne Perez put forward tonight but Raquel Rodriguez and her inability not to see red and fight an emotional battle may have gotten in her own way. Perez caught her slipping. A quick combination of maneuvers hit the Pop Rocks where it counted. Exclamation point on the match. Roxanne Perez is the new women's world champion. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. If you're well, certainly a great time to become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Coming up on Saturday night, September the 7th, your next channel member exclusive live event hit the join button down below or hit the link up in the cards and join today don't miss out on the action action like you just saw moments ago i am still in disbelief new women's world champion the prodigy roxanne perez It is time for the Detroit Street Fight! The following contest is a Fall Anywhere match. Making his way to the ring from Los Angeles, California. Weighing in at 241 pounds. On the outside, LA Knight may not be showing it, but you gotta believe on the inside, he is still feeling the effects about what happened this past Monday night on Raw. Head first through a car window, and then sent right into a windshield of that car by hands of his opponent tonight, Dijak. An eerily similar attack to what we found out happened months ago when Dijak ambushed LA Knight in the parking garage on an episode of Monday Night Raw. Well, this story throughout the summer has only intensified and with no rules or restrictions nothing is stopping these two superstars from tearing each other apart here in d-town die jack stole away victory from the mega star last month at money in the bank an underhanded tactic or two but tonight it is completely legal and I am sure LA Knight is also looking to use the rules to the fullest advantage. This is going to be a fight here in Detroit. And his opponent from Worcester, Massachusetts, weighing in at 270 pounds. 
Dijak returned to Monday Night Raw months ago and was met with nothing but shortcomings. Decided to take out LA Knight to try to make a difference, make a name for himself all over again. And you can't say it hasn't produced results when you look back at what happened in Money in the Bank last month. Wait a minute, LA Knight not waiting for a bell. Well, all's fair in this contest tonight. It is a street fight here in Detroit. LA Knight returned the favor to how Dijak started the matchup five weeks ago in the O2 in London. LA Knight has been chomping at the bit to get his hands on Dijak between the ropes. Tonight is where it counts. Anything goes and microphone off the skull, all and legal. Oh my goodness. Dijak's gonna need a new pair of sunglasses when LA Knight's done with them. As we mentioned, LA Knight may not be showing it on the outside, and that may be on purpose. Could obviously probably use a bandaged rib or two. But not looking to put an own target on his back. Nonetheless, LA Knight here to fight as this street fight gets underway and Dijak set over the top rope. May not have been expecting this early onslaught by the Defiant Superstar. Anything goes and LA Knight is already using those rules to his favor. He's got that trash can in mind and I think he's looking to take out the trash. Dijak, you might not want to turn around. You're not going to like the view. L.A. Knight did not come to SummerSlam to revisit an unsuccessful result that he saw back at Money in the Bank. And right on the barricade. Tonight is a perfect example of Dijak making his own bed and now he may have to sleep in it. L.A. Knight is not wasting any time. Kendo stick now in hand, but might have given Dijak too much time to recover. Well, LA Knight's got to be careful of. You talked about Raquel Rodriguez in the opening matchup fighting in an emotional battle. The megastar is red hot since the bell sounded here in Detroit. LA Knight on the chase and Dijak delivering a thunderous boot. These two men have been at each other's throats all summer long. They have cost each other match after match. They have brawled in the ring, brawled on the stage in the backstage area. Dijak getting that last laugh this past Monday Night on Raw with an eerily similar parking lot attack than the one that kicked off this whole situation months ago. Now Dijak looking to go two for two against LA Knight. Somebody get that microphone out of the ring before it absolutely blows the eardrums out of everybody here at Ford Field. Death Valley driver by Dijak. Dijak may not need the rules and non-restrictions of this matchup to pick up a victory tonight. It was five weeks ago at Money in the Bank. Dijak, just as LA Knight did to kick this thing off, attacked the opponent before the bell sounded. And Dijak exposing three out of the four corners of the ring. LA Knight delivered right into the steel. A feast your eyes on top of that. And LA Knight's visit to London, England was a disappointing one. But as you can see, LA Knight is looking for a different result here at Ford Field. Dropping Dijak right on the turnbuckle. And now he's got his hands on that Singapore cane, that kendo stick. Tried to use it a few moments ago. Dijak took his head off with a lariat, but LA Knight gets the result he wanted that time. Pain inflicted on the man who has dished out so much of it over the last few months. Another shot. That'll teach Dijak a little bit of discipline. Oh! I spoke too soon. It's Larry, it's just leveling. LA Knight on multiple occasions here at SummerSlam. Off the German into the cover, looking for a finish. But LA Knight did not make the trip to Detroit to give Dijak another satisfying win. That is what makes Dijak so dangerous, his ability to fly all around the ring while also having such hard-hitting strikes in his arsenal. Full package of talent is that monstrous human being, and that is what LA Knight has found out firsthand month after month on Monday Night Raw. Dijak just stomping out LA Knight's hopes and dreams here at SummerSlam. And now, right hand, my goodness. 
And now he's got the Singapore cane and he just explodes it on the flesh of LA Knight. There's going to be welts and bruises all over the megastar when he wakes up on Sunday morning. LA Knight trying to create a little bit of distance out of desperation here. Sense of urgency out of the megastar. Lefts and rights. Down goes Dijak. LA Knight coming alive. It was last year at this very event that LA Knight was in the midst of a very lengthy reign as the Intercontinental Champion. I am sure LA is desiring championship gold on Monday Night Raw, but before he can focus on that, he's got to handle this situation with Dijak. Dijak set into the corner. LA Knight in hot pursuit. Both of these men have used the street fight stipulation to their advantage throughout this matchup thus far. Who is going to get the last laugh? LA Knight on top. Me and Dijak going for a ride off the superplex. I think Dijak landed on the damn microphone. Into the cover. Ratsapata right there. And unfortunately for the defiant one, it is only a one count. LA Knight realizing that there is more work that needs to be done. He is heading to the outside. And he has got his hands on a damn guitar right over the skull of Dijak. Well, we are in Detroit Rock City. I think Double J... What the hell does LA Knight got? That's the biggest Slim Jim I've ever seen. I was about to make a hell of a Jeff Jarrett reference, but clearly LA Knight ain't got time for it. Dijak set to the ring as LA Knight is rearranging hardware. The mega star is fired up and he's got the biggest piece of meat I've ever seen inside the squared circle. Oh no. Oof, microphone right off the skull. Ain't nothing pretty about that. Dijak ain't having none of the games tonight. Wants the pinfall, but LA Knight ain't even giving him the satisfactory of a one count. Dijak going two for two against LA Knight would certainly be a victory for that man that would turn a lot of heads on Monday Night Raw. LA Knight off the reversal. Into the ropes, dropping the elbow on the heart. Into the cover. And he almost had it there. Dijak still alive in this Detroit street fight as LA Knight is looking to get the biggest bonus of the Slim Jim sponsorship. Dijak is avoiding that long piece of meat as much as he can. Goes for the springboard, nobody home. Another reversal that time. This is what happens when you're in the ring with a familiar opponent. You see a lot of reversals, you've done your homework. There's another one, right on cue. Big boot. LA Knight is hell bent on using that meat as a weapon. Dijak, oh, he just avoided it, that son of a bitch. This is the damnedest thing I've ever seen here at SummerSlam as Dijak now, as we mentioned, has had enough of the games going back to his roots, Boston Crab from Massachusetts all the way to Detroit. And LA Knight may be in trouble. Submission hold locked in. And you remember the what happened on Monday Night Raw with LA Knight getting sent right into the windshield of that car. I'm sure Knight is not feeling 100%, but he is going to push himself past his limits and let adrenaline fuel him if that is what it's got to take to get victory here at SummerSlam. And burning hammer on Dijak. Safe to say this 50,000 strong is in the corner of the megastar, LA Knight. Slim Jim across the skull. Holy meat. He does it again. Blood force trauma. LA Knight. And a summer full of trials and tribulations all pays off. LA Knight comes out on top here at SummerSlam. The Slim Jim bonus is going to be through the roof 
for the megastar. Here is your winner, LA Knight. LA Knight finally puts Dijak behind him in the midst of a chaotic, yet certainly entertaining. Detroit Street Fight here at SummerSlam. The megastar, LA Knight, his star continues to rise. What is next for the Defiant One on Monday Night Raw? Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight-week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic? Well, man who knows the Cruiserweight Classic extremely well is the man who won it all last year, Ilya Dragunov. Winning the CWC was one of the reasons Dragunov has shot the superstardom in 2024. But a man who has not taken very kindly to the rise of the Tsar, the Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre. One of the most anticipated matchups come SummerSlam is the collision between Drew McIntyre and Ilya Dragunov. The situation between these two men has boiled over in the last month. A story built off wins, losses, and a desire to be a champion for Drew McIntyre. It was this time last year that he was in the midst of an incredible reign on SmackDown as the World Heavyweight Champion. For 267 days, McIntyre was the standard bearer of the blue brand, but that all came crashing down last November at Survivor Series. Losing the world championship to Gunther has sent Drew on a downward spiral all year long. The Scottish Warrior earned his way to a rematch back at WrestleMania. Unfortunately for McIntyre, falling short to the ring general once again standing toe-to-toe -to -toe in a matchup against Roman Reigns at Backlash. And once again, Drew McIntyre saw defeat. McIntyre was feeling like a shell of himself, taking over a month off to try to recalibrate and figure out what he needed to do to get back the World Heavyweight title. McIntyre returned in the first round of the King of the Ring Tournament. A victory sent him to Super SmackDown in the quarterfinals, where a game Ilya Dragunov upset the Scottish Warrior on that night. Their paths crossed again in the final moments of the number one contender's gauntlet match, where once more, the Tsar proved to be invincible, surviving an onslaught from McIntyre and punching his ticket to money in the bank. Our story takes us to London, England last month, where Dragunov went to war with one world champion, Guther. Dragunov was within inches of winning the gold but went down in a blades of glory to the dominant force that is known as the Ring General. Unfortunately for Ilya, the heartbreak did not stop there. McIntyre resurfaced for the first time since the gauntlet and pummeled and already broken and bruised Ilya Dragunov. Over the last month, Drew has succumbed to his demons and has let his failures unleash a whole new vicious side. No one has been safe from the path that Drew has traveled down. But no matter the destruction caused, Ilya Dragunov wants his revenge. At SummerSlam a week from Saturday, Dragunov is in search of his pound of flesh, while McIntyre finds himself in a must-win situation, one-on-one -on -one against the Mad Dragon that has spewed his fire twice before. 
The grudge match is on at SummerSlam. This one is gonna be a war. Pissed off, fired up, and hell bent on victory. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Air Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, the Scottish Warrior. It was one year ago at this very event that Drew McIntyre walked in and successfully defended the World Heavyweight Championship. A championship that no longer is around the waist of the Scottish Warrior. And for the last nine months, McIntyre has been hell-bent on getting back to the dance, recapturing the big gold belt. And somebody who has been in the way of McIntyre not once but twice before is the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. Drew McIntyre has full intention purposes of taking down the Tsar here tonight. But that is certainly something easier said than done. You know, several superstars have been on the rise in 2024. The Mad Dragon just may be at the top of that list. Two victories over Drew McIntyre. Will it be a third? And his opponent from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, Ilya Dragunov. The 2023 Cruiserweight Classic winner a former Cruiserweight Champion, a former Intercontinental Champion, and a former NXT United Kingdom Champion. Ilya Dragunov continues to take Friday Night Smackdown by storm, and five weeks ago, nearly changed the landscape of SummerSlam when he was within inches of taking down the ring general Guther and becoming the World Heavyweight Champion. But a loss on that night was only the beginning of the destruction of the Mad Dragon as Drew McIntyre Beat Ilya Dragunov all over the O2 Arena. Dragunov, just as McIntyre is hell-bent on victory, Ilya is hell-bent on retribution. Dragunov refuses to be a stepping stone in McIntyre's path back to the World Heavyweight Championship. If Drew wants that title so bad, he's gonna have to slay the dragon once and for all here at SummerSlam. We hate to sound like a broken record, but that is easier said than done when you are fighting an individual who thrives off pain and destruction inside of the ring, dragging off hot out of the bell. And McIntyre should be expecting this from Ilya in the opening moments. We saw a quick preview of a fight between these two men in the main event of SmackDown last night. Drew McIntyre and JD McDonough victorious over Ilya Dragunov from the Cruiserweight Champion, Tyler Bate, McDonough pinning Bate in that matchup. But we saw these two men go toe to toe. Oh my goodness! McIntyre, well he said on WWE.com earlier this week that he was gonna bring his most vicious and destructive side to SummerSlam. And I think we are seeing that out of Drew right now. Pile driver to Ilya in the early moments, and now it's all over. Ilya Dragunov. Drew McIntyre desperately needs to defeat Dragunov tonight, and now a submission hold. And when's the last time we've seen McIntyre lock in a submission hold? Drew McIntyre, I'm sure, has added some new wrinkles to his arsenal to throw Ilya off his game. Ilya Dragunov defeating Drew McIntyre in the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament, taking down McIntyre in the final moments of the number one contender's gauntlet back in June. 
Drew McIntyre was already near a boiling point when he met Ilya Dragunov on those two occasions. And it just so happened that the Mad Dragon was the man who pushed McIntyre over the edge. And now Drew McIntyre takes out months of frustration, months of being unable to get back the World Heavyweight Championship on the man who was within inches of winning it five weeks ago. Drew McIntyre, I am sure, is going to have a keen interest on tonight's main event, but he better keep his focus on Ilya Dragunov right here and right now at SummerSlam. And I don't mean to discount whatever McIntyre plans to bring to the ring tonight, but no matter any wrinkles he might have added to his arsenal, we said it before, we'll say it again, Ilya Dragunov, a man who seemingly thrives off pain. He is not intense. He is the personification of intensity. Dragunov taking down McIntyre with one stiff shot. Drew McIntyre go to the outside to create some distance. Ilya, full head of steam. McIntyre gets back in the ring to cut the dragon off. Not trying to see that dragon go flying, and down goes Ilya off the top rope. I am sure Drew McIntyre has watched back his previous two encounters with Ilya Dragunov like homework, and tonight is the final test. McIntyre does not pull this match off tonight and does not sustain victory. I don't know where Drew McIntyre goes from here. We'll have to see what the result is and see how SmackDown will be moving forward as McIntyre is the one taking things to the air. 285 pounds of a pissed off Scottish warrior coming down on the man Dragon Ilya Dragunov. Dragunov is looking worse for wear. Can never count out the czar. But Drew McIntyre may not give Dragunov any moment of hope in this matchup. He is going to stay on him. Not give him any room to breathe. Count of five right now. And Dragunov is just getting beaten from the barricade to the LED board. Now on the shoulders. Dragunov, looking to fight back. McIntyre's got to realize that at any instance, Dragunov has the capabilities to turn this matchup around. He's got that second and third gear that a lot of superstars don't have. And a nice hip toss. Dragunov, I'm sure, is going to be a little slow getting back into this thing. But anything can help as he sends Drew McIntyre to the outside. McIntyre taking a fall. Wait a minute. Never mind. Dragunov's picking up speed. Double boots to the heart. Ilya Dragunov will not be denied. This match has been nicknamed a grudge match for a reason. Dragunov embarrassed, heartbroken, back at Money in the Bank. And although Drew McIntyre will not leave any stone unturned in his pursuit of victory tonight, Ilya is willing to crawl to victory if that's what need be. Massive urinagi on the top of that barricade as McIntyre's down and out. And I don't think Dragunov is looking for a count out victory. I think he's looking to break the count and looking to use his surroundings to his advantage right into the LED. Ilya Dragunov has got a plan, and he is looking to institute it here at Ford Field. Taking down McIntyre, and you got to believe that is one hell of a destructive big boot if it's able to topple Drew McIntyre, at least momentarily. Ilya Dragunov, somebody who has become very close friends with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Great respect has been built between those two superstars over the last few months. Cody even stepping up to fight McIntyre several weeks ago on SmackDown. Dragunov is looking to do one good by Cody, do one good by Tyler Bate, two men that McIntyre has targeted over the last five weeks since this change of heart from the Scottish Warrior. McIntyre set in the corner. Wait a minute here. The Mad Dragon getting ready to spew his fire from one coast to another. McIntyre down. Ilya throwing his own body in the way. 
And it almost gained a victory, but not just yet. McIntyre still in it. At no point can we discount Dragunov. They have done this song and dance twice over the last few months, and Dragunov's hand was raised high on both occasions. Drew McIntyre, however, not looking for that to happen for a third time. And a little overzealous rope break there. Ilya Dragunov knocked off Drew McIntyre in front of 50,000 strong in Mexico City at Super Smackdown in June. Did it again just a few weeks later in the midst of a number one contender's gauntlet matchup. Can he do it again? Or will tonight be the night that Drew McIntyre finally buries the demon of his past in the Czar? McIntyre set over the top rope as Ilya continues to fight. Ilya takes down McIntyre, and McIntyre has taken a couple of falls from the ring to ringside throughout this matchup. And a senton delivers! Man, you can never, ever discount the heart, discount the fight, discount the intestinal fortitude, as Gorilla Monsoon would say, of Ilya Dragunov. This guy just keeps on coming. The personification of built different between the ropes. McIntyre sidestep and just topples Dragunov momentarily. Drew McIntyre has been hell-bent on getting back the World Heavyweight Championship since it left his waist back last November. He's had his opportunities. They've gone by the wayside. McIntyre failed to defeat Gunther in the main event of WrestleMania. Failed to defeat Roman Reigns one month later at Backlash. Came up short to drag it off not once but twice. The tension has boiled over. The frustration has come to a head. McIntyre now misstep as he goes to fly for a second time. Drag it off read his playbook and a torpedo Moscow. Ilya drag it off saw his opportunity and he took his shot. McIntyre overzealous. Torpedo Moscow. Drag it off might have caught him. Drew is still alive. The same knockout blow that defeated McIntyre in the closing moments of the number one contender's gauntlet earlier this summer. Unfortunately, not enough to take down McIntyre here at SummerSlam. Dragging off with the strength to put Drew on top. And now what has he got in mind? Massive overhead throw. This sold out crowd here in Ford Field in great appreciation of the efforts from Ilya Dragunov and even Drew McIntyre, who creates just enough distance, sends Dragunov into the ropes. Powerful spine buster. And Ilya pops the shoulder off the canvas. McIntyre nearly had himself beat, but now bounces back with a Claymore kick. But the man Dragon has still got fire in his lungs. And McIntyre right back on the offense. Ilya survives the Claymore kick and Drew McIntyre's getting even more pissed off. I really hope that Ilya's will to keep on fighting does not be his own detriment tonight. Because as long as McIntyre is the aggressor, Drew will stop at nothing to incapacitate Ilya Dragunov, even if it means his own career is in the harm's way. Dragunov set to the corner and McIntyre with a crushing boot. The Claymore may not have done it, but it certainly has left Dragunov in an opportune state. As Drew heads to the top rope, 285 pounds of an axe chop. Both of these superstars hitting some of their best maneuvers in the blink of an eye. McIntyre went over the top rope. He crashed and burned. Ilya took his shot. Ilya was left wandering inside the squared circle. McIntyre delivered a Claymore kick, yet they keep on fighting. It leaves you to believe that what is it going to take for one of these superstars to fall short of a three count? Drew McIntyre realizes that he made his bed tonight. 
And if Ilya Dragunov is victorious, it is going to be one embarrassing loss on one of the biggest stages of the WWE calendar. Dragunov, electric chair. Where does he get this from? A normal man would have already hit the showers, but Ilya Dragunov is not normal. He is inhumane. He is invincible. Dragunov heads to the top rope. Headbutt to that big old Scottish dome. Drew McIntyre kicks out. My goodness, what a physical war we have on hands here at SummerSlam. McIntyre once again creates some distance. Dragunov gets set for a ride. Dragunov loves to talk about Unbazik Bar being invincible. Something that drives him inside of the ring. But no matter the term, Dragunov just might not have enough left in the tank as Drew McIntyre continues to meet Ilya at every given step. Dragunov looking worse for wear. McIntyre, air raid crash! And he's not done. Eyes locked. And a future shock DDT. It has been some time since we've seen that maneuver. McIntyre wins. Well, I hope he's satisfied. Here is your winner, the Scottish warrior, McIntyre. A change of heart brings a change of results. Pulling out the future shock DDT for the first time in some time. And Ilya Dragunov, unfortunately, just doesn't have enough left in the tank. McIntyre came to SummerSlam to slay the Mad Dragon, and he has done just that. Drew McIntyre gets a much needed victory, and I am sure his pursuit of winning back the World Heavyweight title has only just begun. Coming your way on Saturday night, September 14th, witness the aftermath of the biggest party of the summer, Summer Slam, as WWE and Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present No Mercy. No Mercy comes to you live from the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss championship flashes, personal battles, high stakes, and high rewards all on the line on the 14th of September at WWE No Mercy! Madison Square Garden on the 21st of September as the WWE Women's Champion. We find out up next as the EST, Bianca Belair, challenges the dominating, intimidating, eradicator, Rhea Bloody Ripley. For the last year, one name has struck fear into the hearts of all women here in the WWE. The Nightmare, Rhea Ripley, has etched her name in stone as the best of the best. But you can't spell best without the E-S-T. Bianca Belair has never been more hungry for championship gold. You look at the history of the challenger, 
The last time she found herself on top was SummerSlam two years ago. And ever since that night, whether it been on SmackDown or right here on Raw, Belair has tried again and again to obtain the gold. And once again, she has a chance to achieve that goal at SummerSlam in Detroit. Months ago, Rhea Ripley attempted to use Bianca as a stepping stone, a message sender to the rest of the women's division. That was an attack that Belair did not forget. Rhea went on to once again capture the women's championship back at Vengeance in May, but one EST was waiting in the winds. Rhea, realizing she may have met her match, screwed Belair out of the title matchup in her hometown months ago. Bianca found herself one of two challengers for the gold at King of the Ring in June, and once again, Mommy was on top. For months on end, Bianca Belair has scratched and clawed her way to top contendership. Rhea Ripley has beaten names a mile long, but can she pin Belair's shoulders to the mat in a one-on-one -on -one matchup? That is the question at hand as the EST, Bianca Belair, stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Eradicator, Rhea Ripley, with the WWE Women's Championship on the line. And here comes the challenger, VST Bianca Belair. Two years ago here at SummerSlam was the last time Bianca Belair found herself at the top of the mountain as the WWE Women's Champion. Ups and downs over the last 24 months, tag team championship gold, opportunities slipping through her fingers. But tonight, Bianca Belair finds herself at the cusp of greatness all over again. Victories over Tiffany Stratton, Zia Lee, Piper Niven, the list goes on over the last couple of months on Monday Night Raw. Bianca Belair has proven to be a deserving challenger, a top contender for one eradicator, Rhea Ripley, here tonight. But as tough and as rough and as strong and resilient as Bianca Belair is and can be, Rhea Ripley is a completely different animal. Whether you like her or you hate her, you damn well better respect her. Rhea Ripley although amongst the ranks of the Judgment Day, continues to walk out here alone and defend the championship by herself. Rhea is so confident in what she brings to the table inside of that ring. Rhea has climbed to the top of this mountain, not only in the women's division, but in all of WWE, the personification of a superstar. And that is what Bianca Belair is up against tonight. Rhea Ripley kicking off yet another reign as WWE Women's Champion back in May when she tapped out Liv Morgan at Vengeance. Rhea has retained that gold in a triple threat against Liv as well as Bianca back at King of the Ring and five weeks ago at Money in the Bank turned away a game Bailey in an incredible matchup. Rhea Ripley knows that as the champion, you constantly have a target on your back. And she saw from a bird's eye view, Bianca Belair continuing to climb the ranks over the last few months. Bianca becoming an undeniable number one contender. And now these two top stars of the WWE entirely clash on one of the biggest stages of the year for the most prestigious prize, the WWE Women's Championship. Let us send things down to the ring to Alicia Taylor for your official match introductions. 
Introducing the challenger from Knoxville, Tennessee, Bianca Belair. And her opponent from Adelaide, South Australia, the WWE Women's Champion, Rhea. It is hard to ever bet against the Eradicator. But if anybody is as strong, if anybody is as tough, if anybody is at the top of their game in 2024, just as Rhea Ripley is, will look no further than Bianca Belair. Rhea the champion, Bianca the challenger, two top stars of this industry on one of the biggest nights of the WWE calendar for all the marbles here at SummerSlam. Bell has sounded referee John Cohn officiating this one as the matchup is underway. Test of strength with the collar and elbow in the early going. Should be very interesting to see who sets the precedent in the early moments. And it just may be Rhea Bloody Ripley. Going for the quick pinfall. Trying to get this matchup done in a hurry. Not just yet. We're possibly just trying to get under the skin of Bianca Belair, knowing Bianca wasn't going to go down in those early moments. But as we mentioned, Rhea just trying to set the pace and really defeat Bianca Belair before this matchup even gets going. And that is an interesting note to make. Many a times when Rhea Ripley enters the squared circle, she has her opponent beat mentally before the bell even sounds. I don't know if Rhea Ripley has that advantage tonight over somebody like Bianca Belair, somebody who is a decorated champion. And yes, it has been two years since Bianca has held the WWE Women's Championship, but that does not discount what Bianca has been through in her WWE career. All the while, Rhea Ripley is just dishing out some punishment in the first few moments of this matchup, and now heading to the top. Going for a splash, and it connects. And that's the two count that time. Bianca Belair gets the shoulder up. Bianca has got to try to find a way to shake off the cobwebs and get into this matchup. Rhea, full head of steam, gets caught with an A. Gets caught again. Bianca just going the nightmare in that time. I think Bianca was waiting for Rhea Ripley, and that time she caught her. Hanging her up the top rope, just enough to create a little distance. And as we mentioned, if anybody is going to match Rhea Ripley's energy, look no further than the EST. Bianca just eating a shot and dishing one right back, and there's a signature splash. First pinfall for the EST of the matchup here. Not going to get the three count that easy. No, Rhea Ripley has had a stranglehold in the women's division for the better part of the last year. She was the 2023 winner of the women's Money in the Bank contract, went on to cash it in two months later to become the WWE Women's Champion. And Rhea Ripley will be the first to tell you that there was a hump in the road back at WrestleMania earlier this year when Liv Morgan upset the nightmare. But how fast did Rhea Ripley make up for that mistake? Came back in a blaze of glory. Ran over the women's division, Bianca included, and tapped out Liv Morgan back at Vengeance months ago to reclaim the gold. All the while Rhea Ripley was in pursuit of winning back the championship, she came across Bianca Belair, sneak attack on Monday Night Raw, just as Rhea was trying to reestablish herself. That is an attack that Bianca Belair has not forgotten about. You know, this is not the first song and dance in a one-on-one -on -one occasion that these two women have meant in this calendar year. Remember back in Knoxville, Tennessee, Bianca's hometown in the month of May, Bianca became within inches of defeating Rhea Ripley and becoming the women's champion. I think Rhea saw a sense of urgency and started to feel nervous in that matchup. She got herself, got Bianca Belair, I should say, counted out and cost Bianca the title on that night. And now all roads lead to tonight as Rhea Ripley continues just to take the wind out of the sails of the challenger. Impressive series of strikes and powerful at that moments ago by an ever dominating and ever intimidating Judgment Day representative in the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. Bianca had to expect this. Rhea Ripley just trying to dictate the pace. 
Bianca's just got to do her best to survive and then find ways to thrive. Nice reversal that time. Bianca strutting her stuff. Showing the strength. Big time power slam of the champion. Into the cover. Referee John Cone right there to call. But there was barely a count. Rhea Ripley, a tough task to defeat. Liv Morgan was able to do it back at WrestleMania. But many believe that it was, that was based off a of Rhea Ripley misstep in that matchup. Double Saidos. I'm sure Rhea Ripley is not looking to make the same mistake tonight, this time against Bianca Belair, who is all over Rhea with these power, powerful maneuvers. Excuse us. Power bomb. Rhea Ripley shaking up, heads to the outside. Rhea Ripley's just trying to try to shake it off. Create a little bit of distance. Bianca Belair might have thought about going to the air. Alexa against it. As she saw Rhea get into her feet, and this time, once again, by force, setting the champion to the outside of the ring. And now Bianca's got the fire underneath of her. And now the EST taking things over the top rope. The challenger willing to throw it all into caution in the wind tonight, if it means leaving SummerSlam as the women's champion. Bianca on top, drops the hammer. Will that be enough to knock off Rhea Bloody Ripley? Not just yet. Bianca is hanging in there. Rhea Ripley the aggressor in the first part of this matchup, but Bianca has found a way to turn the tables and turn them emphatically. Another power slam there, and they may not be keeping Rhea Ripley down, but you got to believe the more Bianca continues to stack the offense, Rhea is going to find it that much more difficult to get to her feet. As speaking of such, she uses those two soles of her boots to knock down Bianca momentarily. Look at Rhea Ripley try to hustle up. Might be being the same story being written right now that we saw back in Monday Night Raw months ago. Rhea Ripley, I'm sure, is not taking Bianca lightly, but may be feeling a sense of urgency to try to find a way to retain her title. Bianca not looking to allow it. Creates a little bit of distance. Rhea halfway across the ring, but the agility of Bianca meets her there. Bianca Belair did not come all this way to get her dreams and her hopes of being champion crushed out by Rhea Ripley. Notice how Bianca continues to stack the offense. Could have went for the pinfall off the crossbody, but instead dishes out a little bit more punishment. Rhea Ripley down. Bianca got a little overzealous. Rhea out of the way and just tackles down the EST. Rhea Ripley looking to implore some punishment on the challenger as she sends her to the outside. Rhea going for a boot, but Bianca again. Massive counter. Saito at ringside. Rhea Ripley's bell has got to be wrong. Bianca Belair not looking to see a repeat of the month of May on Monday Night Raw in her hometown of Knoxville. No count outs tonight. Bianca Belair wants to get it done in between the ropes. Back inside the ring we go. Rhea Ripley. Might have her egg scrambled as Bianca sends her into the corner. That was a massive reversal. And an extremely effective Saito at ringside. And clearly Rhea Ripley is feeling the effects. Back to the outside we go. Rhea Ripley seems to be leaning on heading to the outside of the ring where she's got that champion's advantage. Anytime Bianca seems to be in control and Rhea feels in trouble. Bianca Belair is not allowing Rhea Ripley to dictate the pace, just as she was in the first few moments of this matchup. Bianca Belair realizes th that she has to empty the tank tonight if she wants to become the women's champion. And she's got to get it done in the ring via pinfall or submission. Rhea Ripley with a well-needed counter that time. Bianca Belair set in the corner. Now Rhea Ripley just looking to choke out the life of Bianca. Rhea Ripley has steamrolled over so many opponents when championships are on the line. You look at her title reign prior to WrestleMania. Defeating the likes of Becky Lynch, Asuka, Alba Fire, Liv Morgan at one time. 
Once again, defeating Liv months ago. The matchup against Bailey last month. And now Rhea looking to defeat Bianca. Off the frog splash. Another misstep by Rhea Ripley. Tried to take one out of the page of her Latino heat. Dirty Dom's book. And it comes back to bite her. Bianca almost had her. Bianca almost had her. It was mistakes out of Rhea Ripley's game plan that cost her the title back at WrestleMania. And it damn well almost happened again. Rhea Ripley trying to recover off the crash and burn. A frog splash that was not delivered on the mark. But a drop kick lands flush. And again, as we've seen multiple times in this matchup, Rhea hustling up into the pinfall. Rhea may be feeling nervous, and we may be seeing that before our very eyes. Bianca still in this matchup. And Rhea Ripley lights out. Boot to the corner. Academic from here. Or maybe not. Bianca still with some lights turned on. Man, did you see that boot in the corner? Any normal human being is getting their lights turned off, but Bianca Belair has just got that, that different spunk in her. Oh no, Rhea Ripley going for a submission hold. The same submission hold that tapped out Liv Morgan to win the championship months ago. Bianca's in trouble. The legs all kind of tied up. Rhea Ripley using all of her strength, all of her power. But Bianca Belair does the same to get out of the stranglehold. Bianca somehow desperately in this matchup, but she needs to take advantage of the opportunity. Spy Buster! We've got a barn burner on our hands here at SummerSlam for the Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley's own momentum sending her over the top rope. Count on one. But Bianca Belair, I'm sure, is not going to let that count get anywhere near 10. Rhea Ripley on the outside, and Bianca comes flying. Belair knows she can only win the championship inside the ring tonight as she sends Rhea back. We have seen a couple of mistakes out of a champion who has been perfect for months on Raw. Will Bianca Belair be able to take advantage? Rhea sent to the corner that time. Bianca Belair, wheels are obviously spinning, sending Rhea Ripley to the top rope, and well, Rhea's trying to fight back. Whatever Bianca had in mind may come back to haunt her, maybe not. Bianca, this is right back. The hell is Bianca going for? A couple of elbows now. Rhea Ripley, dazed, confused. Oh my goodness, poison right off the top by Bianca. Holy hell, into the cover, new champion on the horizon. Not just yet, Rhea Ripley still alive. When the hell, if ever, has Bianca Belair pulled out a poison Rana, and then on top of that, from the very top rope. Rhea Ripley might have survived, but she is not in a position of thriving as Bianca now heads back. A splash of her own that connects on like Rhea. My goodness, Rhea Ripley is inhumane. Both of these women empty in the tanks. Rhea Ripley is in survival mode and kicked out with instinct. But Bianca Belair now using anything she's got left to dish out some pain and punishment to the champion. Rhea once again, rolling to the outside of the ring. Bianca is hot on her tail. Oof. Right to the barricade, misstep by the challenger. You know, we talked about mistakes being a detriment to Rhea Ripley, but what about Bianca? Reversal, German suplex right on the outside of the ring. And now Rhea, with anything left, starting to come unglued beating the hell out of her challenger. Rhea Ripley back inside the ring, could be looking for a count out or maybe not. Rhea's heading to the top rope. I do not like this if I'm Bianca Belair. Rhea trying to drop the hammer. Bianca sidesteps. 
sends the champion back inside the ring before a count of 10. And another slam. Right on the knee. Bianca Belair continues to fight just when you think she's out. And Rhea Ripley's turned the tables. Bianca finds a way to get back into this matchup. There's another well-timed counter by Rhea Ripley, who is looking for another submission hold here. Trying to throw off Bianca Belair's game. Throw a different wrinkle in the arsenal of a woman who may just have her matched. Another counter by Bianca. Off the hip toss, Rhea Ripley has got to be scrambling in her brain trying to figure out the recipe for success against Bianca Belair, who continues to come alive. Win, lose, or draw, this is going to be one of Bianca's greatest performances yet. The power to take Rhea Ripley out of the corner. Double backbreakers to the champion. Bianca Belair has got her eyes locked on the Eradicator. Rhea Ripley's going up. K.O.D. by Bianca Belair. Into the cover. We have a new WWE Women's Champion. Game recognized game tonight. Even at her best, Rhea Ripley was matched. The EST, Bianca Belair, scratched and clawed her way back to the top of the mountain. And tonight, her crowning achievement, the new WWE Women's Champion. A war of attrition between Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair. But tonight is Bianca's night as she is your new holder of the hardware. Wait, wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Miss Money in the Bank, Cora Jade. Bianca Belair has got to be spent after the matchup with Rhea Ripley. Cora Jade's picking her spot. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Money in the Bank is cashing in her contract. Cora Jade's cashing in. The bell has officially sounded. The WWE Women's title is back on the line. Suicide dive to Bianca Belair. We almost hate to see it. Out of a gutsy, heartfelt performance. And a huge moment for Bianca. Cora Jade cashing in, looking to take advantage of a weakened champion. But Bianca's still got some adrenaline flowing and still got some fight left in her. I cannot believe this. The championship is on the line. Bianca, Spear, and Cora. Can she retain the title? Bianca Belair with a huge moment tonight at SummerSlam. Dethroning the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. Cora Jade, however, picking her spot. Looking to play spoiler. This is what the Money in the Bank is all about. But Bianca does not give a damn about the contract. Willing to stop at nothing to hold the title. Cora Jade still in this match. My goodness, Bianca Belair doing her damnedest to think on her feet, trying to find a way to keep down Miss Money in the Bank, who is cashing in right here, right now, at SummerSlam. These two women jockeying for position. Cora Jade takes down the EST. Will she do it? Will she become the champion? Bianca still alive. Not just yet. Bianca trying to do anything to spoil the rewards that Cora Jade is hoping for. Bianca trying to throw hands. Cora Jade, however, hip toss. Jade coming unglued as she realizes Bianca Belair has still got something left in the tank. Oh no, the EST about to become jaded. Cora into the cover. 
Cora Jade has become women's champion. Here is your winner, and this money in the bank, Cora Jade. You got a feel for Bianca Belair, a two-year journey that culminated and went within moments, winning the women's championship by defeating Rhea Ripley. But don't hate the player, hate the game. Miss Money in the Bank, Cora Jade picked her spot right. And we now may be living in the generation of Jade. Cora waltzes in to her first SummerSlam and is leaving women's champion of Monday Night Raw. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity. Well, what a night it has been thus far here at Ford Field. We are live in Detroit, Michigan for the biggest party of the summer. Summer Slam and Monday Night Rolls. Cora Jade picking up a huge victory moments ago, cashing in money in the bank. Somebody who knows that briefcase very well, a man who cashed it in successfully twice throughout his career, the current WWE Champion, CM Punk. Coming up next, CM Punk defends the gold against the former champion, Kevin Owens. It's the sequel to the cinema that took place at Money in the Bank. This past January at the Royal Rumble, CM Punk, as well as Kevin Owens, kicked off what has been a banner year for both superstars. Punk returned to the WWE for the first time in 10 years with one goal in mind of getting back to the main event. Kevin Owens winning the Royal Rumble match and heading into WrestleMania to become the WWE Champion. Owens' reign from March to July was full of a variety of challengers, from fatal four ways, to a battle with a beast, to pro wrestling clinics. All the while Owens stood firmly at the top of Monday Night Raw, CM Punk was ready to take any route needed to get his opportunity. And when opportunity arose, CM Punk kicked down the door with emphatic force. At Money in the Bank, Punk reminded everyone just why he has earned the nickname of the best in the world. CM Punk captured the WWE Championship for the first time in over a decade. But that night in London just proved to be the beginning of this competitive rivalry. A story built off respect and lack thereof it. A competition built on being the absolute best and a rivalry built on being the WWE Champion. Will mutual respect finally be developed? Will CM Punk continue to hold the gold? Or will Kevin Owens come back in a blaze of glory to recapture the coveted WWE Championship? We find out when the prize fighter meets the Second City Saint with the gold on the line at SummerSlam. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Championship.
raise the curtains and let the sequel commence the 2024 royal rumble match winner the victor in the main event of wrestlemania and the man who held the wwe championship from march all the way to july and over the last five weeks has had one goal in mind recapturing that coveted gold kevin owens has not given cm punk the respect that punk so desires punk said he never meant to make this issue personal it was all about becoming the wwe champion owens has been very vocal saying the wwe championship is personal to him but it all comes down to what happens between the ropes punk was the victor five weeks ago in london will tonight in detroit write a different story And for the first time in 11 years, the Second City Saint is here at SummerSlam. The WWE Champion has arrived. One of the most controversial figures of all time. Like him, love him, or hate him, nobody can deny the championship that is around his waist. That title means you are the best. CM Punk, well known for calling himself the best in the world. And every time that bell rings, and certainly on nights like tonight, where the championship is on the line and the stakes could be any higher, a chance to prove that nickname all over again. It just feels like a big night here in Ford Field. 50,000 strong. Pick your choice. Pick your favorite. Draw the line in the sand. Kevin Owens, CM Punk. Whichever team you reside on, nobody can deny that we are in for one hell of a movie here tonight. Money in the Bank, a great showing on both sides of the ring. CM Punk, off two consecutive GTS, was the victor. Kevin Owens looks to win back the gold. Punk looks to hold on to the hardware. Let's send things down to Alicia Taylor. Introducing the challenger from Maryville, Quebec, Canada, weighing in at 266 pounds, Kevin Owens. And his opponent from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 218 pounds. The WWE Champion, CM Punk. CM Punk already with one successful championship defense of that gold under his belt. Last Saturday night, the WWE live event for No Nation Gaming channel members, CM Punk defeating the megastar LA Knight. But now walks into this rematch with Kevin Owens, who I'm sure has been daydreaming about this night over the last five weeks. A ride from rock bottom all the way to the top of this industry from 2023 to 2024 for Kevin Owens. Owens looking to restart that climb. Here tonight as the bell has sounded, CM Punk immediately off the springboard. CM Punk will gonna set the pace for this matchup and get the early advantage over Kevin Owens. And I'll tell you what, things were really heating up and starting to get personal between Owens and Punk on the lead up to Money in the Bank. Sneak attacks on each other, brawls breaking out in the aisle way. But ever since CM Punk captured the WWE title at Money in the Bank, things have just felt a little bit different between these two men and certainly from Kevin Owens. 
It's as if Owens has dialed back his frustration and is more focused on, well, focusing in on what's going to happen in between the ropes. They've come face to face numerous times over the last few weeks, but this is the first time they are contacting skin to skin since Money in the Bank. We'll see if Kevin Owens has any new tricks up his sleeve that he did not throw at CM Punk back in London, England in an attempt to win back the WWE title. Right now, Kevin Owens using what brought him to the dance. Certainly both men showed each other some of their best hands, if not all of their best hands. In their first go around, so tonight very interesting to see if they'll have anything different. CM Punk obviously had a great recipe to success back at Money in the Bank in London. This will want him the WWE Championship. One GTS wasn't enough, he added a second. It was enough to keep down Kevin Owens for the three count. Owens, I am sure, is looking to avoid the go to sleep at any at all cost as CM Punk delivers a suplex into the corner. Nothing fancy, certainly effective. Just some old school wrestling out of the WWE Champion. Kevin Owens' mantra, very simple. Just keep fighting. And that is what Owens is looking to do tonight. No matter if he was the champion, no matter if he was the challenger, Owens with full intention of finally defeating CM Punk. CM Punk looking sharp, looking like a champion that the WWE Universe can be proud of as Kevin Owens continues to fight on. As we mentioned moments ago, whether you're on Team Owens or whether you're on Team Punk, nobody can deny that two of the best in this industry today are fighting for the most coveted hardware. This is what the WWE title and nights like SummerSlam are all about. As CM Punk with a signature knee into the corner, Punk has certainly been an aggressor over the last few moments. Owens, however, off the reversal, hoisting Punk in the air, and down he goes in the canvas. Kevin Owens has felt firsthand the best CM Punk has had to offer. Kevin Owens now is just trying to absorb any punishment he can in this early moments. Does not want to allow CM Punk to dictate the pace. So I'll see him punk with that knee into the corner moments ago. Kevin Owens now with a signature of his own in the corner. Nice cannonball. Owens said that the WWE Championship is personal to him and he is willing to do anything he's got to do to win back the title here tonight. CM Punk's back is going to be crying for mercy. And a close call there as Kevin Owens nearly wins back the WWE Championship. If that doesn't show you that Owens is willing to do anything he's got to do, to win the championship or die trying as he told WWE.com several weeks ago. I don't know what will. Punk now on the shoulders. Reverse fireman's carry position. Punk going for a ride off the hangman's neck breaker. Kevin Owens feeling the mojo here in Ford Field. Off the senton. Now into the opposite corner. Punk in prime position. Owens delivers a frog splash. Stack the offense, one after another, almost gets the three. Might not have gotten victory, but I am sure has taken some wind out of the lungs of CM Punk off those two high-risk maneuvers. But there's CM Punk bouncing right back. Hasn't earned the nickname of best in the world for no reason. Just as Kevin Owens hasn't been called one of the toughest sons of bitches to ever enter the squared circle for no reason. Both have earned their titles, and CM Punk has held, or sir, I should say has earned the most physical one in the WWE Championship. CM Punk better stop showboating. Better not take Kevin Owens lightly. Just because you beat Owens before does not mean Owens can't turn the tables tonight. Back and forth as they start to jock for position. Kevin Owens shaking up, CM Punk only able to capitalize. Owens pulls the rug out from underneath of him here. Great counter by Punk. Now into the pinfall. Owens into the pinfall. Punk shifts the weight. Owens does it. Wrestling at its finest here at SummerSlam. CM Punk tries to go for the kick. Nowhere to be found. Kevin Owens reversed, but CM Punk caught him. Anaconda Ice locked in. CM Punk going to the well with a devastating submission hold on the challenger.
Kevin Owens felt this firsthand back in the middle of the 0-2 in the United Kingdom. Can he fight back tonight? CM Punk saw an opportunity and he took it off a misstep. What a recovery. But Kevin Owens now creating some separation. And Owens doing what he does best, throwing some fisticuffs, throwing some elbows, knocking CM Punk on his ass. Wait a minute, Kevin Owens in the corner. He's tuning up the band here in Detroit Rock City. A damn sweet chin music to the man wearing Bret Hart colors. CM Punk kicks out. Well, we said Kevin Owens may have added a new trick up his sleeve. Damn near knocking CM Punk's lights out with a very apropos sweet chin music courtesy of the Heartbreak Kid. That was awesome. CM Punk, however, still into it. Punk off the reversal here. Kevin Owens not looking to allow CM Punk to gain complete control of this matchup. Owens wants the momentum on his side. Man, how many reversals have we seen in this matchup so far? These two have done each other's homework, have re-watched the tape of Money in the Bank. Trying to figure out each other's strong points, their weak points, exploit them. Avoid the best that they have to offer. CM Punk going for a cover here, and I think he knew Kevin Owens wasn't going to be put away of a very simple shot in the corner. But Owens being forced to extend that energy and kick out. CM Punk with a very smart decision that time, but obviously Kevin Owens still into this matchup. Two of the best wrestlers pound for pound that the WWE has to offer. They are jocking it over. The best prize on Monday Night Raw, the WWE Championship. That is what they have gone back and forth all summer for about. CM Punk hung up on the top rope and Kevin Owens just beating the hell out of Punk on the canvas. Kevin Owens went to war with so many superstars throughout his WWE Championship reign from March to July. From Seth Rollins to Sheamus to Bobby Lashley to Finn Balor to Bronson Reed to Shinsuke Nakamura. Owens turned away some of the best Raw has to offer. CM Punk was an undeniable force at Money in the Bank. Can Owens change the story here tonight or will CM Punk remain on top? Knee to the corner, pulls him out with the lariat. CM Punk came back to WWE all the way earlier this year in January with one goal in mind. Recapture the championship he once held for 434 days. So far, so good. CM Punk soaking in the pageantry as Owens is in prime position in the corner. What's that, the third or fourth knee of this matchup? Float over. Signature neck breaker out of the arsenal of the WWE Champion into the cover to retain the gold. Kevin Owens heart is still pumping. This has just been a great wrestling matchup here at Ford Field in front of 50,000 strong at SummerSlam. CM Punk now heading to the top. Kevin Owens out of the way. Homework done. Kevin Owens looking for an A-plus on the test. A misstep cost Rhea Ripley. It cost Raquel Rodriguez. A lot of the champions tonight have been their own worst detriment. Maybe CM Punk is going to follow suit. Will Kevin Owens be the new WWE champion? CM Punk on the shoulders, not where he wants to be. Kevin Owens taking him for SummerSlam's biggest amusement park ride yet. On top, he's feeling froggy. That's gonna do it, exclamation point. On the matchup, somehow CM Punk desperately finds a way to get his shoulder off the canvas. And did you see how much energy CM Punk exerted that time? Kevin Owens now with the kick, the stunner, he caught him. No! Man, oh man, Kevin Owens and the whole world thought that was it.
Detroit Rock City has come unglued in the middle of the Lions' den as Owens and Punk back and forth. Owens on the shoulders, go to sleep. The maneuver that won Punk the title five weeks ago, but Kevin Owens has been there before and is not looking for a similar result. Back and forth, reversal for reversal. Best strike for best strike. Owens now out of harm's way. Owens stacking up the champion. What a matchup this has been. CM Punk kicks out. This is what professional wrestling is all about. Two of the best at the top of their game on one of the biggest nights of the year, fighting for one of the richest prizes. Kevin Owens telling CM Punk what to do as he is fired up. CM Punk going to the outside. These two men have wrestled this matchup predominantly inside of the squared circle, but the prize fighter willing to break this thing down to a brawl if need be. Uranagi right on the barricade. Owens breaking the count, meeting CM Punk, who looks worse for wear on the outside of the ring. CM Punk might have goaded him in, however. Never know what's going on in the mind of the Second City Saint. Gets hung up in the top. Man, so many times throughout this matchup, just when you think somebody's got that momentum, it certainly doesn't have sustained in front of it. A reversal, a switch up, a turn to the tables. Who's in the driver's seat? Here in Detroit, certainly a very difficult question to figure out. CM Punk now taking down the challenger. He was already hit CM Punk with a stunner. Punk was able to survive. Owens able to kick out of a go to sleep attempt. And now breeds the question of what is it gonna take? Who is gonna deliver that one final shot for us to see a result here at SummerSlam? Kevin Owens brought to his feet. Oh, ran right into Rod Zapata. Well, damn near might've worked out. Kevin Owens getting stopped in his tracks by a misstep. CM Punk now up against the ropes, getting sent to the outside by the challenger. Kevin Owens' wheels are a-spinning. Wait a minute here. This is familiar territory. Power bomb on the apron. CM Punk doesn't know where he's at right now. Trying to fight through the pain and fight through the punishment. Oh my goodness, where is he getting this from? Power bomb of the hardest part of the ring. Crashing board, springboard. CM Punk pushing himself maybe too far. Reversal for reversal, hold for hold, shot for shot. Submission holding a blink of an eye. Kevin Owens. Just when you thought he had CM Punk, now in trouble. At least he was for a moment. CM Punk brought to his feet. Kevin Owens once again. Wheels are a spinning, so are the bodies. CM Punk stops dead in his tracks. Catches Kevin Owens with an inside out lariat. Owens still into it. This is awesome. This is what the title's all about. Kevin Owens able to survive. How CM Punk is still fighting after getting dropped on the apron a few moments ago is God's greatest question. CM Punk, a man who does not believe in luck. He says luck is for losers. CM Punk believes everything is earned and Punk has earned the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank, retaining it last weekend against LA Knight. Will he be able to earn another championship defense in this sequel against Kevin Owens? Punk back on top, drops a high knee. Might have shattered the nose of the challenger. And how many near falls have we seen? Owens once again kicking out. But CM Punk, more confident than ever. He is feeling what he is producing. CM Punk relying on that springboard several times throughout this matchup. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And now CM Punk 
with Kevin Owens on his shoulders. A second GTS. Poetry as it was at Money in the Bank. That is it. CM Punk retains the title. Wait a minute, Kevin Owens and CM Punk face to face in the ring. CM Punk extending the hand just as he did back in the month of May. And all these months later, I think respect has finally been earned between the WWE Champion and Kevin Owens. And after that incredible battle, you certainly love to see it. Owens was a great WWE Champion, and he will have another shot down the line. But tonight belongs to the Second City Saint, to the best in the world. Like him, love him or hate him, nobody can deny that CM Punk has come back to WWE in a blaze of glory in 2024, and sits rightfully on top of the mountain as the WWE Champion. Coming your way on Saturday night, September 14th. Witness the aftermath of the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, as WWE and Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present No Mercy. No Mercy comes to you live from the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss championship clashes, personal battles, high stakes, and high rewards all on the line on the 14th of September at WWE No Mercy. And No Mercy will certainly be shown in the matchup that's coming up next. The highly anticipated eight-man tag team warfare as Seth Rollins aligns with the Judgment Day to take on a bloodline that stands in arms and a bloodline that is looking for retribution after a summer-long fight here in Detroit. Perhaps the most emotionally charged bout at SummerSlam comes in form of a four-on-four -four battle. The Bloodline stands in arms as they face off with the Judgment Day, as well as Seth freaking Rollins. This rivalry has only intensified throughout 2024. The Usos returning to Monday Night Raw back in January crushing their goal of winning the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic and winning the World Tag Team Championship gold against the Judgment Day at WrestleMania. Victories for Jay and Jimmy that did not sit well with Damian Priest and Finn Balor. The goal for the Judgment Day became that much more clear. Eliminate the Usos and continue their takeover of Monday Night Raw. A Tornado Tag Team Rules match at Vengeance in May proved to benefit Priest and Balor as Dirty Dominic Mysterio assisted them in winning back their gold. A costly moment on that night only added fuel to the fire of this ever-growing war. Jimmy Uso was sidelined with injury during the battle. Jey Uso, out for his revenge, found himself the casualty of a parking lot assault. When it seemed as if the Judgment Day had rid themselves of their Uso problem, Solo Sokoa emerged on the scene to defend the honor of his battered and bruised brothers. Solo became another footnote in the destruction caused at the hands of Balor, Dom, and Priest. The Judgment Day looked to move forward, but one tribal chief, Roman Reigns, was not going to sit idly by and watch his family be destroyed just as Reigns was set to return to Raw and outweigh the numbers of the Judgment Day. They called upon an insurance policy. Seth freaking Rollins, a man who has done business with the boys in black and purple before, and someone who knows Roman Reigns better than anyone, 
spoiling his Monday Night Raw return with a vicious curb stomp. Business was taken care of, at least for a few moments. The Bloodline rallied the troops and planned their payback accordingly. Now, the Bloodline are back on Monday Night Raw and looking to finally put an end to the chaos their enemies have caused. At SummerSlam, the lines in the sand will be drawn. The turf war for supremacy begins. Only one unit will stand tall. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, and Seth freaking Rollins on one side. Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokoa, and the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns on the other. Let the battle of the summer begin. For months on Monday Night Raw, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and Dominic Mysterio have been out to do one thing, hostile takeover the best way to describe it. One unit has stood in their way time and time again. The Usos, Solo Sokoa, and of course the emergence of Roman Reigns. Tonight it is put up or shut up. The championships may not be on the line, but certainly a battle for supremacy on Monday Night Raw certainly is. Last year, they stood alongside each other in a war against the Brawling Brutes. Now in 2024, it is the Bloodline. And when Roman Reigns came to even the score, the Judgment Day called the number of somebody who knows the Tribal Chief possibly better than he knows himself. He is a visionary. He is a revolutionary. He has had a decorated WWE career. And I am sure the man who lost the WWE Championship back in the main event of WrestleMania earlier this year would love to get back to the main event and contest for the gold once more. But Roman Reigns and the Bloodline have stood in Seth Rollins' way ever since the visionary made the conscious choice to join this war. Just as it is for the Judgment Day, it is put up or shut up for the Visionary. And, and a combined weight of 493 pounds, Jimmy Hit J. When Jay and Jimmy returned to Monday Night Raw back in January, I am sure they did not anticipate being entangled in a year-long war with Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and company. The World Tag Team Championships, only a checkpoint in the story between these two units. And I am sure Jay and Jimmy would love their opportunity to get back the gold that they lost at Vengeance, but tonight, a more grand scheme of issues at scale. The Judgment Day have decimated the bloodline 
Tonight, those four individuals are looking for their pound of flesh. The street champ, Solo Sokoa, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Seth freaking Rollins in a stellar Monday Night Raw main event two weeks ago. He might have come up short, but Solo Sokoa, ready to get his hands on Rollins, get his hands on Dominic Mysterio, the man who knocked him out of the King of the Ring tournament months ago, and certainly get his hands on Damian Priest, the man who sent him right through the announce table with a South of Heaven and sidelined Solo Sokoa for damn near two months. Three have entered, but one head of the table remains. The Tribal Chief has arrived at SummerSlam. Lacing up his boots for the first time since May the 4th at Battleground, when he almost defeated the Ring General Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. Roman Reigns returned to Raw to address the issues between the Judgment Day and his bloodline. Seth Rollins got involved entangling Roman Reigns in the whole situation. Sneak attacks, brawls, boiling over issues. It all comes to a head tonight. If Monday Night Raw can only belong to one unit, if only one group of four can stand tall, well, tonight is the night we figure out who that is. The Judgment Day want to hold all the gold. They want to hold all the power. They've aligned with Seth Rollins in an attempt to do just that. But the bloodline are not ready to sit idly by Why Priest, Balor, Dom, and Rollins push their way around. No count outs, no disqualifications, yet pinfall or submission must take place inside the squared circle. The bell has sounded. The eight-man tag team warfare is underway. Expect the unexpected and chaos certainly is a coming as Damian Priest set in the corner by main event Jey Uso. In terms of momentum, you gotta believe it is at an even slate coming out of Monday Night Raw this past week. Dominic Mysterio retaining his Intercontinental Championship by hook or by crook over Jey Uso. And as for Damian Priest, coming up short against Kevin Owens thanks to a little assist from Roman Reigns. As we mentioned, Seth Rollins defeating Solo Sokoa two weeks ago on Raw. The Usos, last Saturday at WWE Live, returned to tag team action in a victory over the Creed Brothers. Celebration was not to be, thanks to the unexpected beatdown that Damian Priest and Finn Balor bestowed upon them. It all started when the Usos took down the Judgment Day at WrestleMania for the World Tag Team titles. All these months later, families have gotten involved, friends have gotten involved, a turf war is among us, and right now, Damian Priest is feeling the wrath as the ones are to the sky in Detroit, Michigan. Jimmy Uso was concussed and put on the shelf in that tornado tag team matchup back at Vengeance. He is looking for his pound of flesh against the Archer of Infamy who takes him down momentarily. Oof. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, and Seth Rollins, I am sure, have put together the ultimate game plan tonight to divide and conquer of the bloodline, just as they have done several times on Monday Night Raw. Oh, 
miscalculation there. Seth Rollins, I think, was going for Jimmy. Accidentally hit Priest. Obviously, there's been an alliance between the Judgment Day and Seth Rollins in the past, and it has bled into this rivalry with the Bloodline. You gotta wonder how they are gonna mingle and coexist in the sense of having that partnership in this matchup. Dominic Mysterio in with Jimmy Uso. Dominic Mysterio certainly, firsthand, aided Balor and Priest in winning back the World Tag Team Championships months ago. All in the midst of that matchup that, as we mentioned, put Jimmy Uso on the shelf. Jay Uso trying to get his measure of revenge was put on the shelf just weeks afterwards. And now the Intercontinental Champion taking fullest advantage of the stipulation tonight. Using that steel chair, knocking the street champ Solo Sokoa off the apron. Remember, there is no countouts or disqualifications in this matchup. It has been titled the eight-man tag team warfare for a reason. Dominic tagging in Seth freaking Rollins. Jimmy Uso's got himself a steel chair. Seth Rollins better watch it, Jimmy Uso. Might as well be joining the Detroit Lions. That was a pass downfield with that chair. And I believe, yes, Solo Sokoa setting up a table at ringside. Both these units looking to use the rules to their advantage. If anything goes, anything can happen. Got to believe a victory for the bloodline tonight would help put the Usos, Solo Sokoa, and even Roman Reigns in conversation for championship titles on Monday Night Raw. Championship titles at the Judgment Day currently houses. Meanwhile, Solo Sokoa tagged in. Seth Rollins getting the best of them just as he did two weeks ago on the Red Brand. Now Rollins using that steel chair against Solo Sokoa. The same that Jimmy Uso instituted a few moments ago. Once again, a man who has been called the enforcer of the bloodline by Roman Reigns, set to the corner by the visionary. Seth freaking Rollins looking to be the difference maker for the Judgment Day here tonight. He was the difference maker when Roman Reigns made his return. Curve stomping the head of the table right on the concrete floor. But will Seth Rollins be able to aid Balor, Priest, and Dominic, some of the current champions of Monday night, in victory as Solo Sokoa eats the turnbuckle for Saturday night dinner? Jimmy Uso breaking things up. Should be very interesting to see how these two units continue to use the rules of this matchup in their game plan. Solo Sokoa, great counter, belly to belly right on the steel chair. And Rollins sent into enemy territory. The Judgment Day looking to eat the Visionary alive. Scoop and a slam, nothing fancy but effective. And a tag made to the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. Roman and Rollins about to lock horns here at SummerSlam. Roman Reigns lying in wait and picking his spot. Roman's been daydreaming about this chair shot. And this moment here at SummerSlam, ever since Rollins curb stomped his lights out back in the month of June. Rollins trying to get the hell out of Dodge. Meanwhile, Roman Reigns says, fine, I'll go after the men in the black and the purple. There's a shot for Damian Priest. One for Balor. Oh, Dirty Dom with a right hand. And Seth Rollins from behind, Rollins Pedigree on Roman Reigns, and luckily for the Tribal Chief, he just missed the chair. Oof! Roman's back was turned, and Rollins took the fullest advantage. Roman Reigns in trouble. Rollins looking for an exclamation point early. Roman Reigns with a cutter on the visionary. These two men were as close as brothers at one point in time, and the benefit of that knowledge is the knowledge they now have against each other. Roman knows Rollins' playbook, and vice versa. These two men willing to go to war at the sound of a bell, and Rollins now sending Roman into enemy territory. Tag mid of the Intercontinental Champion, Dirty Dom. Remember Dominic Mysterio? Aided Seth Rollins in a victory over Sami Zayn a few months ago on Raw! Hold that thought! Superman punch! Finn Balor saving the day. These two teams of four not holding any punches tonight. 
Dominic Mysterio saved by the Prince. And now the Intercontinental Champion sending Roman Reigns into the corner. Roman Reigns trying to knock Dom's lights out. And that might have been it if it worked for Finn. Now Dom has got hold of a table. Well, you can't say the young man doesn't have guts. He may be the Intercontinental Champion today because of underhanded tactics from the Judgment Day, but that doesn't mean Dominic hasn't picked up a trick or two. And Dominic certainly not phased by the unwelcome invite from this Detroit audience. Counter by Roman. Dom on the shoulders. Another shot. Back and forth we go. As Roman hangs in there with Rollins and now Dom. Tag made to main event J. Who I'm sure is itching to get his hands on Dom. After the Intercontinental Championship outing just a few nights ago on Raw. Jey Uso sending Dom up. Dom with the counter. These two men, whether you like the result or not, had one hell of an Intercontinental Championship match this past Monday Night on Raw. Dominic Mysterio, with help of Finn Balor, able to retain that title. Jey Uso now back where he was on Monday. And that's in the defense against a game Intercontinental Champion. Dirty Dominic Mysterio, like him or not. Blame the Judgment Day for his results or not. Is obviously leaps and bounds to where he was this time last year. A whole new superstar. A whole new man. The Judgment Day has brought him success. And it may be on the verge of happening again. Tornado out of the corner. Dom. Frog splash on Jay. And Roman Reigns going to ensure that that is not the final bell in this matchup. Oof. Uppercut just for Dom's troubles. Dominic Mysterio with some salt in the wounds of main event J. Solo now the one to ensure there won't be a three count. Should be very interesting to see what happens as we get into deep waters in this eight-man tag team warfare. You see how physical it has been thus far. Every superstar trying to dish out their greatest hits. Here comes Dom. 619 in the Motor City. Jay Uso looking up at the lights of Ford Field. Dominic Mysterio's got his feet on the ropes, that son of a bitch. All's fair in this matchup, but Jay is still alive. Jay Uso said, You're going to have to kill me to beat me tonight. This is the Bloodlines night. We've waited all summer for this. Out of the ring goes Dirty Dom. Jay getting fired up. Uso going a flying. What a comeback by Jay Uso over the last few minutes. The frog splash, the 619, with the heart of main event Jay pumps on. Tag made of the Prince. I don't think Jay Uso realized that he's grabbing that table. Finn Balor taking advantage. Down goes Jay. And now a tag made of Roman Reigns. Roman looking to get his hands on each and every member of the Judgment Day tonight. Finn Balor first time being legal in this matchup, although Roman Reigns already knocked him off the apron earlier on. These two men, no strangers to each other, have had several battles over the years. Meanwhile, Finn Balor taking down Roman Reigns. Damn near dead center of the ring. And a tag made to Seth Rollins, who I'm sure is looking to put the exclamation point. Rollins going to the top. Goes for a frog splash. Nobody home. Roman Reigns not looking to make the trip to Detroit, Michigan to give the Judgment Day and Rollins a satisfying victory. Roman Reigns off the reversal. Now dishing out some closed fist to one revolutionary Seth freaking Rollins who did not get the delivery he so desired off that frog splash. What a fight this has been. There is tables, there is chairs, a ladder at ringside, anything goes. No count outs, no disqualifications, but the decision needs to take place inside of the ring. Face first off the buckle. Roman in trouble once more as Rollins into the cover. Roman to get the shoulder up. Jay was also ready. Get involved if need be. 
Usos, I am sure, want to get their hands on the World Tag Team Championships. Solo Sokoa, a man who has yet to hold championship gold since joining the main roster last year, would love an opportunity, I assure you, at the Intercontinental title. Meanwhile, Roman and Seth Rollins, two bona fide future Hall of Famers, reigniting an old rivalry. Friends, foes, bitter enemies, whatever you want to call it, Roman and Seth locking horns here at SummerSlam. Rollins with a tag to Damian Priest. All the while, Roman was setting up that table. Well, Roman Reigns has got destruction in mind. You remember it was Damian Priest who hit a south of heaven on Roman Reigns through the announce table last month in London, England. Roman could be going for another ride. Could be looking for Razor's Edge through the hardware. Roman getting the hell out of Dodge. Into the table he goes. Priest trying to put on the... Put on the tracks there. Into the table, there he goes that time. Oh, wait a minute, Roman Reigns! Power bomb through the table! Finn Balor breaking things up, but the damage is done. Detroit coming unglued for the carnage we are witnessing here at Ford Field. The table exploding thanks to Damian Priest and the impact of his own flesh. And it had to be satisfying momentarily for Roman Reigns, a table for a table after the events between Roman and Priest last month. Tag made to Solo. Tag made to the Intercontinental Champion Dominic. Solo Sokoa, eyes locked on Dirty Dom, misses wildly with the kick as Dom sidesteps, goes for the crossbody, lands on the debris. Back and forth these two young men go. Solo now, looking to fight back. Goes for the kick again, misses wildly. Dominic Mysterio try to play catch up at their Damian Priest was devastated for a moment. As we mentioned a few moments ago, both sides in this matchup have thrown some of their greatest hits. Along with the no rules and restrictions, this has been quite the fight here at the biggest party of the summer. Solo Sokoa down momentarily, thanks to the young, talented son of a bitch, Dominic Mysterio, who just got knocked off the apron by Roman Reigns. I don't think the bloodline give a damn about an underhanded cheap shot or two after everything the Judgment Day have put them through throughout the summer. How many times have we seen the men in the black and red devastated by hands of the men in the black and purple? Solo now dropping the leg on Dirty Dom. Solo almost got caught a few minutes ago, a few moments ago, knocking Finn Balor off the apron, but able to fight back. Dominic now the one in enemy territory. Solo Sokoa, certainly not in a rush to incapacitate the Intercontinental Champion. Eyes locked. Solo and Spike into the cover. Seth Rollins breaking things up, going after the man he was able to defeat two weeks ago on Raw. Dominic Mysterio once again saved. Dominic's got to be feeling worse for wear. He has been on the receiving end of some of the Usos, Solo, and Roman's best shot. If the young man has not has it already. He is certainly earning his colors. Solo Sokoa tagging in Roman Reigns. Meanwhile, the bloodlines take it off. They're going after the Judgment Day on the opposite side of the ring. Seth Rollins are going to get involved. Roman Reigns in the corner. Spear on Dom. Victory for the bloodline. What a fight with no rules or restrictions and the greatest hits on each side of the ring. But in the end, the Intercontinental Champion thrown to the Wolves and the Bloodline eating him alive in the closing moments. Here are your winners, the team of Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, Solo Sikoa, and Tonight, the bloodline got retribution. 
They came to SummerSlam and got their pound of flesh, but I got a feeling their pursuit of the Judgment Day's championship gold has only just begun. Well, that bloodline runs extremely deep and it rolls right in to our next contest here in Detroit. From guest host to in-ring action, the great one, The Rock, is back. For the first time ever, he goes one-on-one -on -one with the Apex Predator, Randy Orton live and up next. For Randy Orton, 2024 has been a year revolving around destruction. After failing to win the World Championship several times last year, many felt Orton's best days may have been behind him. Orton took that to heart and finally snapped. And throughout the last eight months, we have seen one of the most cold and calculated versions of the Apex Predator, more than we've ever seen before. We have seen him send Cody Rhodes to the hospital on more than one occasion. He sidelined Bobby Lashley after a vicious RKO in the concrete floor last month. And when the SummerSlam guest host, The Rock, returned to SmackDown at the Great American Bash, Orton saw his greatest opportunity yet to remind the world just how dangerous he can be. Ambushing Rock from behind and dropping him with not only one, but two emphatic RKO's. Orton does not care who he harms as long as the Viper strikes and stays on top. But the Rock of all people was not going to take that attack lying down. And last week, he returned with vengeance in his eyes. A-Town Down Under were the casualties as Orton scurried away. But come SummerSlam, it is put up or shut up for Randy Orton. You want to remind the world of the man you once were and prove you are still that same, if not more destructive man. Well, August 17th is the night to prove it. The Viper, Randy Orton, one-on-one -on -one with the probable The Rock. Rock trading in his guest host duties for a pair of boots. They go one-on-one, -on -one, live and in living color at SummerSlam. Certainly a big fight feel as your co-main event is set to kick off live from a sold out Ford Field at SummerSlam. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 275 pounds. Twenty twenty four has been for Randy Orton about erasing the memory of twenty twenty three. His failures brought Randy Orton to his most destructive mind state yet. And we have seen some cold hearted actions out of that man over the last few months. Randy Orton saw the Rocks return to SmackDown as an opportunity and possibly his greatest opportunity yet to remind the world, remind these 50,000 plus that have jam-packed Ford Field here tonight just how dangerous the Apex Predator can be. The Viper has continued to spread his venom throughout the Friday Night SmackDown locker room. The Randy Orton may be on the verge of regretting those actions. The Rock was not gonna take that attack from Randy Orton lying down. The Great One had all intention purposes of just being a guest host, a special attraction for SummerSlam here tonight. But Orton threw down the gauntlet and The Rock said, you know what? Give me my boots. Let's fight on the biggest party of the summer. electrifying superstar in all of 
of sports entertainment. And his opponent from Miami, Florida, weighing in at 265 pounds, The Rock! Who would have thought that SummerSlam 2024 would feature the in-ring return of the people's champ. But here we are, graced with the presence of the world's most recognizable Brahma Bowl. An eyebrow raised high as Randy Orton may be about to face his demons, may be about to regret the actions of his past. A former WWE Champion, multiple times over. WrestleMania main events in the tank. Done it all, been there, done that. The Rock would not be getting back in the ring tonight if he felt that Randy Orton's actions weren't necessarily ones of disapproval. But The Rock feels that payback is a must. And tonight, the Great One looks to ensure that he cuts the head off the snake. First time ever, one-on-one. -on -one. The first time they interacted inside a squared circle, Monday Night Raw, 2004, 20 years later, here we are at SummerSlam. Look at The Rock. Looking like a million bucks. Should be very interesting to see how The Rock performs here tonight. Not an active competitor. Will there be ring rust? It's The Rock's first matchup since WrestleMania of 2023. Which almost similar situation there was a one-off appearance. A surprise against the megastar LA Knight. The Rock has not been full-time for quite some time. Will that come back to bite him? Against a game hell-bent on destruction, Randy Orton. Randy Orton could certainly have a feather in the cap of his 2024. If his first time competing against The Rock one-on-one -on -one can lead to a massive singles victory here at SummerSlam. 2023, certainly a year full of big-time losses and big-time matches for Randy Orton. But that doesn't mean every go-around was an upsetting night for the Viper. Last year here at SummerSlam, Randy Orton one-on-one -on -one against the Rated R Superstar Edge. It was a victory. And as a matter of fact, two years ago here at SummerSlam, Randy Orton with a victory over the man he put on the shelf last month in the almighty Bobby Lashley. Randy Orton has had great success at this very event. Won his first World Heavyweight Championship here 20 years ago. Will that success bleed into this meeting against The Rock? Oof. The Rock may be regretting lacing up his boots tonight. I understand wanting to get your payback over a man who struck when he didn't need to in Randy Orton. Randy Orton has shown throughout this year that he may be his most dangerous superstar, that he have a dangerous version, we should say, he ever has been. Orton giving The Rock a moment to breathe. Rock looking to make him pay. Great one had all intention purposes of just holding a microphone in his hands and wowing this sold out audience here at Ford Field. But I think everyone can agree that The Rock putting on his tights and lacing up his boots, what everyone wants to see. Randy Orton sent right back into the corner forcefully by the great one and The Rock starting to unload. The Rock has been left laying on numerous occasions thanks to RKO's by Randy Orton. And for several weeks on SmackDown, Rock has tried to chase down the Viper, and one way or another, Orton has gotten the hell out of Dodge. Tonight, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Meet the demons of your past in one Brahma Bowl. Now, Rock's looking good, to say the very least, but can he keep this up? Tell you what, Randy Orton very obsessed in 2023 with trying to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Talked about earlier tonight, Drew McIntyre and his mission of trying to get back that big gold belt. 
I am Sore Drew. We'll have a keen inter interest on the main event coming up next between Gunther and Cody Rhodes. But if Randy Orton can win this matchup against The Rock tonight, Randy Orton may be an undeniable number one contender for the world championship. All remains to be seen, because right now Randy Orton is looking worse for wear against a future Hall of Famer in the Great One. You notice how The Rock is not overzealous. He has taken his time, making sure every shot has just as much emphasis on it as the last. Randy Orton tries to go into the corner. The Rock not giving Orton any room. It's the first time these two men are ever going one-on-one -on -one in a singles matchup. They have participated in the ring before. 2004, Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania 20. Randy Orton alongside the Nature Boy Ric Flair and the Animal Dave Batista with a victory over The Rock and Mick Foley. The Rock and Sock Connection. Will Randy Orton go two for two in outings against the Great One? Great combination of strikes that time. The Rock not allowing a comeback. Randy Orton trying to spew his venom all over this matchup. Reversal for reversal that time. That's going to feel like running into a brick house. Rock just unloading on Orton. Great counter. Did you see the power behind that clothesline? Randy Orton's got to be thinking, maybe I underestimated this man. It's been quite some time since The Rock was in action here in the WWE. And I don't think Randy Orton was expecting this kind of power and energy out of the hierarchy of the bloodline. And oh man, The Rock clear it off the announce table, which could only mean devastation for Randy Orton. But I think Orton realizes and he is trying to turn the tables in a hurry. Sent right into the apron, The Rock sent back inside the ring. I'm sure Orton would take great satisfactory in putting The Rock right next to the almighty Bobby Lashley on the injured reserve list and never see it in this case, The Rock ever again. Rock better be careful tonight. Randy Orton was out to send the message on The Rock's behalf back at the Great American Bash. Well, tonight the ante is certainly up. Randy Orton's got to realize the opportunity that is seemingly at hand in this first time ever match up here at the biggest party of the summer. Oh no, Randy Orton rarely goes to the top rope. What the hell has the Apex Predator got in mind? Powerful hammer being dropped right on the exposed dome of The Rock. And just like that, Orton has taken momentum emphatically. Oh man. This is where Orton starts to become sadistic. This is where Orton starts to become violent. The pace Orton loves to wrestle, the pressure he loves to implore, The Rock is feeling the brunt of it. The Rock had a great showing for a few moments, but I think Randy Orton has brought that to a screeching halt. Rock gets the shoulder up, but he may just be delaying the inevitable. No waste in motion, no hesitation. The Rock has felt that maneuver before and is not looking to see his SummerSlam night come to a disappointing ending. Orton saw an opportunity and he struck with the RKO. The Rock is still into this, but as we mentioned a few moments ago, is he just delaying the inevitable? Randy Orton looking to bring the destruction, looking to spew his venom. Second RKO attempt, Rock. Powerful and meaningful counter, and now unloading on the Viper. Ford Field is on their feet as the Rock and the electricity he brings starts to fire up here in the ring. Rock got dropped with not one, but two RKOs back at the Great American Bash in July. Two weeks ago on SmackDown, dropped with an RKO at ringside. Rock not looking to see those three destructive letters be his ultimate ending here at Ford Field. Randy Orton set over the top rope. I'm not even sure if The Rock meant to throw him over. His own momentum, but it did the trick. Oh, wait a minute. Rock exposed this announce table a few minutes ago. 
Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Rock bottom for the announce table. Randy Orton finding out that payback is a cold-hearted son of a bitch. The Rock putting Randy Orton through the announce table with an emphatic rock bottom, hustling up into the cover. Jessica Carr looking to count the three, not just yet. Here we freaking go. We got a matchup on hand. RKO doesn't do it. Rock bottom doesn't do it. Who's going to get the final blow of this first time ever legendary collision? Orton trying to get to his feet. Rock lying in wait. Float over. DDT. You know, at one point in time, Randy Orton called himself a legend killer. The Rock, no doubt, one of the greatest legends of all time. Orton looking to kill the legend of the great one before our very eyes. The Rock not looking for that to be his final story. Rock knocked down by Randy Orton. It is now or never by the Apex Predator to get back into this matchup. Orton might have survived that rock bottom, but you gotta believe a hell of a lot was taken out of the Apex Predator. Rock in the corner, Randy Orton looking to slow it down, take the wind out of the sails of this Detroit audience. Randy Orton does not give a damn about the 50,000 strong here in Ford Field does not give a damn about the millions and millions watching around the world. Rock on the other hand, trying to fight back. Kick to the gut already, Orton. Orton gets one shot. Rock going off the apron. Orton heading back to the top. Oh my God! Randy Orton throwing caution in the wind, all in the means of stomping life out of the lungs of the Rock. We said it earlier on in this matchup, Randy Orton rarely takes things to the top rope. If that doesn't show you a sign of desperation, I don't know what will. And now just adding salt in the wounds. Randy Orton with his eyes locked in the rock. He's going for an RKO at ringside, but Rock has been there before. He has read that story and he has found a way around it. Now full head of steam, but Orton with the Luthez. Classic and effective. The Rock with a well-timed reversal, but I don't know if he's got enough to get back into this matchup and sustain some momentum long enough to chop the head off the snake. Rock up against the barricade, looking worse for wear. There's a reversal that time. Might have goaded Randy Orton in. Sending Orton back inside the ring. Does The Rock have anything left after Randy Orton is instituted? A hard-fought and destructive beatdown with maneuvers that Randy Orton rarely has pulled out in his career. Nice takedown by the great one off the comeback. Wait a minute here. The Rock, the elbow pads going to fly in. And people's elbow by the probable. Victory for the Rock. We hate to sound like a broken record, but it's so apropos. Randy Orton finding out firsthand that Payback is a cold-hearted son of a bitch. He dropped the Rock with two RKO's in the first week of July at the Great American Bash. The Rock came and got his retribution tonight. Here is your winner, the What a showcase by the Great One. The most electrifying superstar showing on any given day, he can hang with the best of them. And that is why he is one of the best ever lace up a pair of boots. Well, Randy Orton's year of destruction goes back to the drawing board as The Rock comes to SummerSlam tonight and gets exactly what he wanted. Payback, victory, a successful return 
for the most electrifying superstar in sports entertainment. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. The nighttime has dawned over Ford Field here in Detroit, Michigan. What a night it has been here at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. A successful return to the ring for The Rock. New champions crowned. And will a new champion be crowned in your main event? We are going to find out coming up next. It is one year in the making. The 2024 King of the Ring winner, The Ring General. The American Nightmare, the World Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes versus Gunther. We are in the end game now. Can Cody pull off the victory of a lifetime? One year ago at SummerSlam, Cody Rhodes achieved one of the highest honors of his career as he conquered Gunther, dealing him his first loss since joining SmackDown and also becoming the United States Champion. But many believe that loss 12 months ago has only made Gunther stronger, leaving doubts in the minds of the world on the legitimacy of Cody's victory. The past year has been one of heartbreak, triumph, trials and tribulations for one American nightmare. All the while, the last year for the Ring General has been one of unquestionable wins, dominating performances, and a wasteland of destruction created by his own hands. Who the hell is gonna stop that man? Since Gunther's SmackDown debut in December of 2022, he has accumulated a record that reads 32 victories and only one defeat. A defeat that still rings in the ears of the general who is out to stomp out the memory of that night. August 17th at SummerSlam will mark 275 days as the heavyweight champion of the world for the ring general Gunther. And on that night, Gunther not only seeks retention of his gold, but is out to solidify his legacy once and for all, no matter the reigning king that awaits him. A date in Detroit for one Cody Rhodes marks the culmination of a year's journey through the highest of highs. Cody Rhodes is going to SummerSlam! And the lowest of lows, the 2024 King of the Ring winner, scratched and clawed his way to this moment. Rhodes and Gunther have done this song and dance before, but SummerSlam is no doubt the highest occasion of them all. The American Nightmare versus the Ring General. The King of the Ring versus the World Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes versus Gunther in the main event at SummerSlam.
Wrestling has more than one royal family. It is main event time, Saturday night, August 17th, 2024, 50,000 strong in Ford Field, the World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Big Fight Field does not do this main event justice. All the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations for one American nightmare. Hitting rock bottom time and time again is what it felt like the words of Cody himself. But to scratch and claw his way through four hard fought rounds of the King of the Ring tournament to come back after everything Guther and Imperium has thrown at him over the last two months to ensure that Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci would be barred from ringside two weeks ago on SmackDown. Nobody can deny that Cody has earned this matchup tonight, but it is now on the shoulders of the American Nightmare to get the job done. Certainly a raucous reception for a man that has been called the final boss for 275 days. Gunther has held on to the World Heavyweight Championship with an iron fist. 32 victories since arriving on Friday Night SmackDown in December of 2022. But there is one blemish on that record. One blemish that came 12 months ago in the midst of a United States Championship contest right here at SummerSlam. Who was the man who took him down? The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. But make no mistake about it, two months prior to that, June of 2023, Gunther had defeated Cody on Friday Night SmackDown. Tonight, a highly anticipated rubber match. And the stakes could not be any higher. Guther has seen them all, beaten them all. From Roman Reigns, to Edge, to Braun Breaker, to Brock Lesnar, to Ilya Dragunov. But will Cody Rhodes be the one to take down Guther? Introducing the challenger. If you ain't got goosebumps, you better check your pulse. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. 
the King of the Ring winner, Cody Rhodes versus the Ring General. The championship hoisted high in the sky. One fall to a finish. Live here in the main event of the 2024 edition of SummerSlam. Here we go! Guther looking to set the precedent. Immediately taking down Tony Rhodes with a suplex. And Guther, extra aggressive, coming out hot. We have seen Guther over the last few months rely on Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. And many believe that is because Guther's challengers have only gotten more difficult. And especially in this kind of situation where Guther is going up against the man who has handed him a loss last year at SummerSlam, Guther had to be hoping that Vinci and Kaiser would be assisting him here tonight. But as we found out two weeks ago on SmackDown, Cody Rhodes ensuring that Kaiser and Vinci would be barred from ringside after a victory in a two-on-one handicap matchup. Cody Rhodes has got the odds in his favor. The numbers are even. But that does not mean it is going to be any more easier to take down the World Heavyweight Champion. This has been hard hitting over the last 60 seconds since the bell sounded. Guther sending the challenger to the outside, asserting his dominance as he's done time and time again. 275 days, defeating Drew McIntyre all the way back at Survivor Series. Since then, has retained the title over Edge, Ricochet, Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre again in the main event of WrestleMania, Braun Breaker, Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley, and Ilya Dragunov. One hell of a reign for Gunther, like him or not. And certainly it's not a fan favorite of this capacity crowd in Detroit as Guther continues to unload fire and fury on the American Nightmare. If Guther's excitement, for lack of a better term, in the first few moments of this matchup tells you anything is that he may be a little bit nervous about the American Nightmare and Guther is trying to establish himself in the early moments. Everything Guther throws has meaning. There is no waste in motion. Out of the world heavyweight champion as Cody Rhodes sees an opportunity. Cody Rhodes gonna try to rally here in Detroit, Michigan, taking Guther into the corner in this highly anticipated main event world title clash. Cody Rhodes looking to hold the championship that his father, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, once held. Guther getting to his feet, Cody Rhodes. Oh, look at this, double springboard, cross body on the ring general. Nicely executed. Cody Rhodes, I'm sure, has done his homework. Look back at last year's SummerSlam to see what worked, what didn't work, what he needs to do. Guther has only gotten stronger. Ever since that loss last year, it's as if Guther took the aggression that he was found with on that night channeled it and it led him all the way to the world championship and he's only gotten better since Cody Rhodes may have beaten Gunther in the past but can he beat this version of Gunther is the question that's at hand it's one thing to knock Gunther down plenty of men have done that but only one man has ever keeping him down and again, not to sound like a broken record, but can Cody Rhodes do it again? That is why we are here. That is why we are in the midst of this trilogy matchup. One year in the making between Cody Rhodes and Guther. Off the springboard, Cody Cutter by the King of the Ring winner. Hustle it up into the pinfall. Charles Robinson goes, only a one count. Cody Rhodes throwing out some high octane offense in the last few moments. The springboards off the crossbody and the Cody Cutter. Neither putting Gunther away. Maybe a DDT will at least knock him silly. Cody Rhodes defeated JD McDonough, Andrade, Ilya Dragunov, and CM Punk, your current WWE champion, beat CM Punk in the finals of the King of the Ring tournament. To earn this opportunity here tonight, Schoolboy almost stole the title. And I'm sure Cody Rose knew he wasn't going to get the pinfall that time, but just trying to get into the psyche of the ring general Guther. 
Big Guther exerts some energy trying to kick out and frazzle the champion. Cody Rhodes is the great offense over the last few moments, but as you can see, Guther changing the tides. Guther has been extremely aggressive over the last few minutes. Ever since the bell sounded and throwing everything he's got behind every strike. A normal clothesline would do a lot of damage, but it does that much more when Guther is the one throwing it. Cody kicking out, but look how much it took out of him. Needing the ropes just to get to his feet. Now earlier tonight, we described Ilya Dragunov as a man who's just built different, and I hate to throw that terminology around so loosely, but Guther may be just that, built different. Cody Rhodes brought to the outside, and Guther gonna meet him there. Knockout blow with the knee. Obviously the champion's advantage tonight. Guther could, by a technicality, retain the world title via count out, but I don't think the ring general's looking for that. Guther knows that the eyes of the world are on this main event tonight. It could be a legacy-making performance if the ring general can retain the world heavyweight title. Wait a minute here. Count of seven, Cody Rhodes is on the outside. Guther, what a scary sight as he comes off the top with a finely executed drop kick. That has gotta feel like a missile in the heat of war. And now a dragon sleeper on the outside. Guther knows he can't win this matchup via tap out on the outside of the ring, but he knows he has an opportunity to incapacitate the American Nightmare and Guther's gonna take it. Cody Rhodes trying to struggle out of it and he does. And takes down the champion within an instance. Cody Rhodes hustling up, getting back inside the ring. He needs the decision between the ropes to win the World Heavyweight Championship tonight. Count out, disqualification would do Cody no good in leaving Detroit with the big gold belt. No matter the result of this matchup, there are several superstars like Ilya Dragunov, like Drew McIntyre, like Randy Orton. The list goes on on Friday Night SmackDown who are obviously going to be gunning for the World Heavyweight title. It all comes down to Cody Rhodes and Guther and this matchup in this moment. Off the Russian leg sweep, Guther trying to get to his feet. Cody Rhodes coming off the top or at least trying to again. Once again, the ring general taken down by a flying American nightmare. Cody Rhodes leaning on those high octane, high flying maneuvers a couple of times throughout this matchup. And Cody could be looking for that to favor him in victory. Luther is now the one hoisted on top. Not by will, but by force of the opposer. The hell's Cody got in mind? Olympic slam! We'll shout out to Kurt Angle, another American icon, and Cody Rhodes pulling out that feather in the cap. Not enough to keep Guther down, but had to take some wind out of his sails. Great maneuver by Cody, and now a kick to the gut. Pedigree by the American Nightmare. Hustle up, get the three. Not just yet, Guther's heart is still pumping. Blood still in the veins, Guther's still alive. What a great series of maneuvers by Cody. The crossbody, the Olympic slam, the pedigree. Not enough to keep Guther down, but you gotta believe massive damage has been done to one final boss. And again, taking things to the air. Cody and his confidence sky high here at SummerSlam. It has been an awesome night thus far. One for the history books without a doubt. It's certainly a SummerSlam that'll send an aftershock throughout all of WWE. But our last question to be answered tonight is who is gonna be the rightful World Heavyweight Champion? Another, so another springboard, excuse me, no springboard needed. Cody Rhodes with springs in his boots. The American Nightmare, so far looking so good. Just as much offense as he has dished out, Guther has dished out tenfold. And a drop kick by the champion. 
Just like that, Guther shows why he is dominant. And now, Cody in trouble. Power bomb that has put Icon to this industry away. But Cody Rhodes is still in it. The same power bomb that has defeated the likes of Edge, the likes of Ricochet, the likes of Brock Lesnar. Cody Rhodes is still alive. Cody Rhodes knows that this opportunity may not come around again, and he cannot leave anything left of the tank. Expend all of it tonight and try to outlast one of the greatest to ever do it. The power bomb does not put away the King of the Ring winner. But maybe a quick snap on top will. Not just yet. Forcing Cody to extend energy and Guther starting to get frustrated. Not something we see too often. But we have seen a different, more aggressive, dare I say, a little bit more nervous of a side out of Guther over the last few months on SmackDown. Now on the outside of the ring, Cody Rhodes trying to create some separation here. Nice shot. One out of the arsenal of the Rhodes family. Guther just collapsing. Both these men have done some serious damage to one another. But who is going to have enough left in the tank to leave Ford Field? Walk out of the lion's den as the heavyweight champion of the world. Cody Rhodes has got Guther dazed at ringside. Cody once again is heading to where he has been very comfortable throughout this match. Cross body to the outside. How many times has Cody found a way to use his own body as a weapon to crush the soul of the ring general? Guther sent back inside the ring. Cody Rhodes starting to get his fire underneath of him. Guther taken down once more. Now it's Guther the one. Running towards the corner and Cody Rhodes in hot pursuit. And what a matchup this has been. Both men have done, I should say, dealed some of their best shots with the World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Cody once again, heading to the top. Cody Moonsaw! It's not over yet! It is not over yet! Guther is somehow still in this matchup. That was picture perfect. Cody Rhodes with a moonsault. Diving off the top just as he has several times throughout this match. He has leaned on it. It has been a benefit, but Guther's still moving. And Guther now putting Cody in the corner. Oh my goodness. Look at Guther start to come alive. Oh, wait a minute here. I think I know what he's going for. Cody's in trouble. Nobody's ever kicked out. Of the Avalanche Power Bomb! That's it! No! Cody's still alive! Holy sh! Cody Rhodes just kicked out of the Avalanche Power Bomb! A feat that no man has ever accomplished! That move is put away! The likes of Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, Ilya Dragunov, but Cody Rhodes showing that he is a fighting, a different version tonight. Guther, crash and burn. Cody Rhodes, with anything he's got left. You gotta believe his body feels like a broken, bitter mess after that avalanche powerbomb, but Cody Rhodes still trying to find whatever he's got left in him. To try to press on Frankensteiner from the top. This is indeed awesome. As we tried to say a few moments ago before our words start to got jumbled, Cody Rhodes is showing Guther that Guther isn't the only one who is fighting a different version of their opposer tonight. Trials and tribulations. Ups and downs for the American Nightmare. Cody Rhodes may have been made for this moment, but it's not over yet. Guther kicks out. 
275 days, 32 victories, only one defeat. Cody's got one more shot, crossroads. The American Nightmare delivers the hat trick. We have a new World Heavyweight Champion! Oh my God! Cody Rhodes does it in the main event with the lights on bright. The ups and downs of the last year lead Cody Rhodes to the greatest success story ever written. When Cody Rhodes kicked out of the avalanche powerbomb, you could just feel an atmosphere come over Ford Field, a feat nobody has ever accomplished. Cody Rhodes digging down deep, reminding himself about what it took to get to this moment. Pulls out not one, not two, but three emphatic crossroads. And the end of this story is written with a new World Heavyweight Champion. The prodigal son on top of the world. Gunther and his empire have come crashing down by hands of one American Nightmare.